I've had a rough relationship with Fallout 4 as a game. It was the first game I ever got on PS4 and one of the few console games that I played around that era. And in years since, I've never beaten it and never got much past 50% of the game's content. So in light of my new job in the household, which if you're the sort of person like me that watches my videos, has probably also recently happened to you. I'm now the official Fallout lore buff of everyone I know watching the new Amazon Prime series. So in light of that fact, I thought I'd go back and put 10 to 20 hours into Fallout 4 and see what the game felt like after all this time. Now, Fallout 4 was released back in the days when Bethesda was a largely a critical darling who could do almost no wrong and more or less every AAA game the likes of Blizzard, Bethesda, and Ubisoft was waited for with bated breath. So Fallout 4's release, especially after the incredible success of Skyrim, was really, really hyped. You couldn't have seen it at the time, but now looking back on the launch of Fallout 4, you can see some of the cracks in Bethesda that would come to emerge later, but also just in the AAA industry as a whole. While making this video, I actually realized to my surprise that Fallout 4 is actually a really amazing game. In fact, by the standards of the huge decline in the quality of AAA games lately, compared to Starfield, Fallout 4 is an absolute gem of a game. Now, there's a lot of reasons I could break down why Fallout 4 is a great game, and I might do that in a future retrospective. But today I want to talk about something that struck me the most profoundly about my recent playthrough. And that is if you look hard enough while playing through Fallout 4, you can see the cracks begin to emerge in the AAA gaming industry and in Bethesda. So stick around. I'm nearing 1K subs, and I'd really like to hit it so that I can, you know, at least buy my daily cup of coffee off this channel, which would feel like a triumph. So, you know, it doesn't cost you anything, and it cheers me up. So, anyways, let's get into it. It's worth looking back at the history of the game at its launch and how it was received by those tastemakers of all gaming games journalists. So first, let's start with some really dumb criticisms. And as usual, whenever I look for dumb criticisms of games, The Guardian is generally first on my list. So they say of Fallout 4 storyline, A nuke is about to hit this town in seconds. There's a Fallout shelter 50 meters away, and people are standing with their kids doing what a handful of guards sell them, the sheep. The nuke hits as soon as you're in. Upon returning to the surface 200 years later, you see their idiotic skeletons, and it's hard to care. Hans, I've just noticed something. These communists are all cowards. I think this sort of criticism probably reflects more on the person playing the game, not caring about the idiotic skeletons, than anything Todd Howard intended, but let's, let's get to it. Let's be honest, Fallout 4 has a different tone. In fact, it's a tone I quite like. Unlike New Vegas, which had a bit of a spaghetti Western vibe with its Italian mobsters and cowboy hats, or Fallout 3 that had almost a more grimdark vibe, the sort of thing that I might expect out of Games Workshop, Fallout 4, even as much as its bright sort of yellowy blue color scheme, is much more a whimsical game. One of the constant tropes of Fallout 4 and of the series in its whole entirety is the retro sci-fi sense of humor, the complete dissonance of the sense of 1950s perfectionism of housewives and perfect cars with all the inevitable ghouls that will be running around after the bombs drop. That contrast is just built into the game's glib exterior and the content it deals with, and The Guardian is, as usual, sort of tone deaf on this. But one thing they do raise is that there are issues with the launch of the game, particularly on console. Writing in the PS4 version, we tested minor issues, including NPC allies getting stuck in walls, conversations ending, but leaving you stuck in conversation mode, enormous load times when leaving exteriors, and inescapable death trap autosaves that ruin several hours of progress. Occasional manual saves are a must. Now, it always cracks me up when games journalists admit in their own reviews to being bad at the games they are reviewing, without knowing it half the time. For anyone out there, if you play a Bethesda game or just an RPG with a quick save function in general like Fallout 3 or 4 or the Elder Scrolls games, and you rely on multiple hours of your playtime on the autosave function, you are either new to the series or just a bit dumb. The quick save function exists for a reason 
and for you to use the autosave function for two to three hours of a playthrough, just so something I've always mentioned on this channel that I hope we all know is true. Games journalists suck at games. The correct bit of the review though is undeniable. Bethesda are known for releasing buggy games and this comment and its consistency came up so much in my research for this video that it became almost nauseating. Giant Bob, on the other hand, had a much more reasonable response to the game, praising its style and improvements to the combat. In fact, there was only one mark against the game, and that was its performance and game-breaking bugs. Writing, But the glitchy technical issues appear across the board, in every version of the game. In that, Fallout 4 is universal. As such, a big part of deciding whether you want to play Fallout 4 becomes a personal inventory of your desire to either revel in these glitches or your patience at dealing with them should they appear. Giant Bomb get it something that now has become a complete meme of the entire studio at Bethesda. To play a Bethesda game, and this is really when it became a mark of consistency for the series, was that the launch of Fallout 4 proved that Bethesda could not make a game that was not full of bugs and that would not need to be fixed by their modders. And this to me gets to the real reason why I think Fallout 4 had a damaged reputation at the time. I'm gonna call it Bethesda fatigue, though in 2024, I think we should probably call it triple A fatigue. Let me explain. When Morrowind came out, it was a groundbreaking game. I remember reading through my copy of PC Gamer, scrutinizing every article on it. Sadly, my PC couldn't run at the time, and I'd gotten deeply into JRPGs, so I wasn't really looking for a new PC game at the time, and it would be a good few years before I did eventually play it, with all the available bug fixes at the time. But it was a groundbreaking huge success of an RPG, a game that's bugs were largely overlooked because it was fun. When something is new and groundbreaking, you expect bugs. But along came other games, Oblivion, Fallout 3, Skyrim. The only one of these games made by Bethesda's engine, not by the in-house team, was Fallout New Vegas, which is in my mind by far the best of these games, but that's a story for another time. But even IGN when praising Obsidian's work on Fallout New Vegas wrote, if only Obsidian and Bethesda had polished up the game by fixing the AI, improving the animations, or even gotten it running smoothly. Does this sound familiar for Fallout 4, for Starfield, for Fallout 76? The point I'm trying to get at is even back at the release of Fallout New Vegas, there was fatigue with Bethesda's endlessly buggy games, with awkward camera angles, NPCs walking into walls, bad AI, and this always expecting, always being expected to be fixed by the game's community. I love Bethesda games, but as I finally played Starfield, and there's a lot of other bad things to be said about Starfield, I'm not comparing Fallout 4 to Starfield, I would never be that crass. I realized one thing above all else explains the decline in Bethesda's reputation and the reputation of its games, even when those games have good elements to them as Fallout 4 does. In fact, I think it has, upon replaying it, a lot of good elements. Bethesda have to shape up into something resembling a modern professional gaming company that doesn't rely on modders to solve all of the issues in their games. In the end, Fallout 4 is a good game and I'm happy that I'm replaying it. And if people on here want me to do a full rundown of that, maybe I'll do a retrospective of it in the future. But when I look back on it now in hindsight, we can see what led to the game's slightly controversial release. People were getting tired of Bethesda's crap. The long load times, the AI, the uncanny valley NPCs. One buggy game is okay. Two buggy games is a worrying trend. By the time Fallout 4 came out, people were getting annoyed. And by the time I was playing through Starfield, and I'd been doing a quest for an hour and a half, only to have it soft lock my entire game, I just decided to uninstall. And regardless of whatever good merits their games have, their fan base is slowly becoming fatigued by their consistent failures and seeming inability to rectify them. On the other hand, 
This doesn't stop a fully patched PC version of Fallout 4 being an absolutely awesome experience in 2024, and the game's negative reputation from its launch really isn't deserved if you end up playing the game in that state. If anything, most of those issues have been resolved, besides the ones that are just inevitably Bethesda. Overall, it's still an infinitely better experience than the dismal mess that is Starfield. But that's another video for another time. Uh, again, if you stuck around this long, like and subscribe. I'm going to do a few more sort of quick retrospectives on the releases of the other Fallout games now that the uh, show is out. And I'm replaying them all and uh, for fun, uh, other than my sort of long-term retrospective content. In the end, uh, peace. And I'll see you guys in the next video.